Okay, class. I'm recording this video again for uh, animation and simulation of the inverted Brandel problem that we discussed on Wednesday in the class. So I've created a folder uh, called uh, in this inverted pendulum 2020 v2 so that's the folder where everything will remain uh, and now we can start our matlab so i've already created this folder all our files will be saved here so we can start the matlab okay Okay, so what we can do is take so what we can do is like right now it's on my desktop the MATLAB uh, MATLAB folder we can go to uh, the folder that I created this inverted pendulum 2020 v2 is the folder that I created so now anything we do any files that we will save once so we are in uh, this folder right now so the MATLAB will have access to all the files in this folder so the first thing to do uh, is to <clears throat> I would say let me also that's the first step so inverted pendulum simulation so step one basically is creating a folder right uh, for the sim simulation so I've already created that and step two is like open open MATLAB and and go to the folder created in step one right so that's once you go there step three will be create a param dot m file okay matlab file so this will have this will have all the parameters okay so that's the file you need to create uh, so let's go back to our matlab we'll come so i can go and create a new script and we can call it function uh, i'll just you know uh, you can you can so we can save this as uh, param dot m file okay save and then so this is where all your parameters will go okay i'll just copy and paste uh, parameters that we created in the class here right so all the parameters go in this file okay so parameters include your initial <coughs> states that's your y theta y dot theta dot your gravity mass of the cart mass of the pendulum uh, bob length of the uh, broad and these are the drawing parameters drawing parameters can be different than simulation parameters just for the sake of clarity so uh, so these will be used for drawing we have gap we have height we have width all these parameters will be used in. okay so that's one so if you run this you will see that p your parameters all the parameters are now in the workspace so you have to run it there is a run button here which you use to run 
the parameter on. and this is the file that you have to run before you run the simulation block okay so that's our first step now let's go back to our powerpoint and the, what will be our step four step four um, uh, step four is basically create a blank simulink model simulink model file right so to do that um, we have sub steps here uh, just just type simulink in the command window and a simulink uh, browser will open right so let's try that so here in my command window just write simulink and it should open there are other ways to open things too but uh, we can just that's one way it says starting simulink right so so once it starts we can create our uh, main simulink file that basically that is the main simulation file where all your s function and animation blocks will be there and that's what you run to run your simulation okay so it opens so when it opens you can uh, create a blank model right that's so when you create a blank model taking time as usual okay so we have our blank model this is the window that you see this is where you put all your uh, so we can put a name here and this is the main main simulation model file that you have to run after running the param param.m file okay so this is our so you can name it when you save it you can call it uh, my ip sim Right, so my I inverted pendulum IP sim. Okay, so that's the name. That's the main file. So you have. So now you see there are two two files in this folder. One is the param dot m. One is my IP sim dot slx. So dot slx file is the main simulink file where you have to put things. Okay. So now. <coughs> Yeah, if you see these four squares here right here if you just click it uh, it brings out the simulink library browser right so we need to get uh, two functions one is the s function for uh, solving the x dot ordinary differential equation and the other one is um, to uh, for the animation folder so you go to this user defined function the first thing for the animation one is this interpreted matlab function this is what we need interpreted matlab function so just drag and drop this to your model that is my ip sim model you just drag and drop and it should come here so this is uh this this block we will will be connected to the animation file basically okay so if you go inside right you can write um, uh, draw pendulum so that will be uh, our file 
which will draw the pendulum so u is the input um, and p are the parameters input will include your uh, displacement of the cart angular displacement of the bob and time and p are all the parameters needed for the drawing there is no output to this uh, file so you can say output dimension is zero and you can apply and okay so now you will see we, we will have to have a pen draw pendulum uh, file here okay so that's what we need so what okay and then so let's uh, create a new file which is called draw uh, function let's say matlab script file it's called draw pendulum and it takes input u and parameters p okay so that's our draw pendulum file save right here okay so i can copy uh, draw pendulum things from previous version all right just copy paste so all our things we can copy right here okay so i'll just go over uh, things here so draw pendulum is a function a matlab function which is connected to this uh, this block here uh, the interpreted function block you can call it uh, draw draw pendulum right so that's our draw pendulum this is connected to this draw pendulum dot m file okay so what it has is we uh, so we have parameters like len uh, <clears throat> the length of the rod the gap the gap is between uh, <clears throat> uh, the zero axis width and height of the rod and we have three parameters needed for the drawing which is y is the displacement of the cart theta is the angular displacement of the rod and t is the time will be needed for one time for the rod initialization so we are using persistent variables here uh, to uh, store the handle values of base and rod basically persistent variables are, are uh, variables with memory it remembers its previous value for that particular function so uh, it will store its value in the current run and when it comes back to this uh, function again in the next run it will remember its previous value okay so <clears throat> uh, now there are two two items that we need to draw here one is the base uh, so that function it's a separate function within uh, the draw pendulum it thinks so this whole function here so what we are doing here is <clears throat> the parameters needs uh, needed for it is the displacement of the cart the width of the cart height of the cart the gap the handle value for the first time handle value will be empty and the mode which is what animation mode we are using so this two points x and y are the coordinates four coordinates of the uh, of the cart uh, easily you know, so y x depends on of course the displacement y and you use width gap and height to create these four uh, coordinates once you have that coordinates for the first time when you come to this function your handle will be empty so when you uh, at t equals to zero so at that time you you will be using this fill command where you use this x y coordinates and what it does it uh, as it fills it with magenta color and the area inside those those four vertices and we are using this mode as erase mode okay so for the first time it creates uh, when the handle is empty at time t equals to zero it it draws that picture and stores that value in the handle but when it comes in this in this function for the second time we don't have to use this function because matlab has already knows that object all you have to do is say i have this handle value what are the new x and y and you just set those that handle at new x and y that's what this set command does and you do this draw now command after that 
So it, it puts the object at new x and y and draws the picture. So that's that's the basic goal of this function here. Okay. Similarly, we have a draw rod function. Similar, like it has two coordinates. One coordinate uh, is at, at at the at the base, at the cart, and one is the coordinate of the uh, bob. So that can easily be create uh, uh, computed using theta displacement of the cart and uh, the gap and height. So again, similarly, at the first time t equals to zero, it plots a straight line between these two points x and y. Uh, in green color, right, and uses erase mode. The second time when it comes in, it just sets this handle at a new x and y position, and you use draw now to uh, do that. Okay, so these are the two main fun uh, two functions that will be called in the main body, and the main body is uh, right here. At so what we do is these are persistent variables at time t equals to zero you just start and you figure one right and uh, you this one is to draw the track okay so <clears throat> and then you use hold on track is the straight line on which the cart moves and the track is plotted at a height of gap equal to gap uh, from the zero axis or x axis so first at time t equals to zero uh, we want to create the base handle uh, which is this here using the draw base function that we have created just the input it to it will be a displacement of the card width height and for the first time because there is no handle value we pass into an empty variable so that uh, because in uh, draw base we are doing uh, checking whether the handle is an empty and for first time t equals to zero this will be empty and it will create the uh, draw the picture for the first time similarly you draw the rod handle right and create an axis you set an axis here if you don't set an axis your picture you know the dimension of thing that will be changing so this is how you create the axis okay that's at t equals to zero for the next two uh, once it has initialized for the next time it will just you just call draw base and draw rod and pass in the base handle what and means it, because it remembers its previous value all it is doing is going and setting new x uh, new coordinates of base and rod and it redraws the picture so that's all uh, it does so this is all so that's it that's that's this is where the main uh, draw pendulum function ends we are calling these two uh, functions to draw, draw rod base uh, rod and base for the first time and then basically next from next time onwards it just sets the base and rod at new x and y coordinates uh, okay so that's that's the draw okay so this is this is again connected to our this function so now let's set up uh, so we go to our browser again and because now we need three inputs one is the y theta and time y and theta comes from the s function and time will have to come from uh, a clock so we can use a multiplexer here right so multiplexer goes here we can get a clock from sources so this drag and drop this clock here you can connect this clock here this will come from the s function okay so now let's uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, draw the s function thing here uh, so s function is if you go uh, user defined functions uh, so this is uh, if you see there's a s function here just drag and drop it and so the uh, again the s function output will be 4 uh, in this case we can say let, let's uh, s function is uh, can output y and theta uh, uh, to you uh, so in class we we were outputting all the four but maybe here we will just output two uh, uh, y and theta and this can be connected to this so this is our s function 
the night does it all pendulum and input to this will be uh, some kind of a force so we can use some constant here so that's our force we can keep it zero for now so later on in your higher uh, like feedback control class this will be a controller okay but right now we are just manually inputting zero force to the cart okay so this here system we can call it pendulum so that's our s function pendulum file and we can look we are passing parameter p that was created from param file and say apply okay so that's our uh, this the simulation is ready now we have to go and create this pendulum.m file there so how do we get it so you can get a template for pendulum.m from um, your uh, user defined functions if you see examples of s functions here you can go to matlab file as functions level from s functions and there is a level one matlab file template right here in this and it, when you double click it it will open this template as function template you can rename it as uh, so first we can do it save as in the same folder we were doing so And this is where you can and you can call it pendulum pendulum dot m file okay save so you can go and head so now you see here we have pendulum dot m which is the s function which is basically solving the ordinary differential equation and spitting out all the states param dot m is the parameter file drop pendulum is the animation file and this my ip sim is your main simulink file where all of these files will be called except param.m so first you have to run param.m then you have to run my ip sim.slx okay so let's change this guy's name you see um, we have that so now what changes you have to make is we have to pass in we everything remains same here so t is the time it, it has your internal way of computing time and keep x are all the states which is actually your all the f y theta y dot theta dot u is your input that will be the force flag is its internal variable to keep whether it is initializing so all we have to do is change put a p like parameter file p and here and then we can go ahead and put p in a model initialize so this is the function where we will initialize the model p we will use parameters in your model derivative this is where you will define your x dot or put your x dot equations and output if you need p uh, we can put p here and then again let's go ahead and model initialize again we have to put a p right now i'll go ahead and put p everywhere so that i don't forget it okay so now what we can do is uh, model initialize here right that's where we are setting up our s function how many states we have we have four states y theta theta dot in class we were saying we were four outputs all the states but let's just output two states y and theta that says oh, that are the two states needed for drawing so we will only output two states and input is one dimensional okay let's input our control s and this is where you initialize it your states so we have it in param file so it is p dot x zero right control so that's initialization now we can go to model derivatives this is where all your equations of motion will come basically right so we can just copy it from our pre uh, previous class thing just copy all the equations here so from model derivatives right so 
this is where my x dot will go so system x dot okay i will not copy and paste those equations here this is for u right so just write x dot one equals to something x dot two equals to something and x dot three equals to something and x dot four equals to something right so this is where you will put your equations of motion that we derived in the class right so that's all we have to do and uh, And then in model output here we can say s uh, assist the output is just first two states so we can say x one is to two so basically y and theta are the two outputs of this okay let me quickly i just put all my equations of motion here I know you guys can freeze and see equations, but anyways. So that's set. So we have all the files required. So again, we will only need four files for now. We have pendulum.m, which is ES function, which solves the ODE. We have param.m, which is the parameter file. We have the simulink file, which is the main file, and draw pendulum is the animation file again going back to this is so now we have every all the blocks so this is connected to drop drop pendulum this is connected to pendulum.m right so two files needed to run this my eip.sim so first thing first step is go and run param.m so just run this file here before you run the simulation and then we can run our uh, my eip.sim and you will see that Yeah, so this is what is expected. And then it should get unstable pretty soon. So that's it. Uh, this is so what uh, the the so the so what you have to submit. So for submission, I would say submit uh, the derivation derivation of your equations equations of motion on paper on paper means take a picture scan it and then code all, all your all your all your codes like you can label them assignment one or oh, the problem assignment one dot problem one code and assignment one problem two code and then a uh, screen capture capture of your simulation running okay so this is what you should submit okay so i hope this video will help uh, again uh, yeah so having said that i will see you guys tomorrow thank you